Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about design. People seem to get so confused about these acoustical issues that I try my best to keep things simple and put them in, you know, A, B paradigms that people can understand. But from the calls I get uh, every day, and we get 20 or 30 probably on average, I don't know if I'm getting through it all some days. So let's try noise and treatment because these are completely separate issues that people seem to get confused on a lot. So noise transmission is kind of a two-way valve. If you have a room and you're generating energy in the room, that energy is going to leave the room. And if you have an energy source outside the room, that energy is going to get in the room. And the way we stop that is we erect a barrier, right? That's the term we have to use. Now, the barrier has particular requirements based on the frequency and amplitude of the noise. That's another issue people get confused about. But we'll talk about that later. But the goal here is noise. We want to reduce the amount of noise that enters the room and probably want to reduce the amount of noise that leaves the room. Although, you know, maybe not as critical as noise coming into the room, right? So we want to lower the noise floor as much as the budget and space requirements will permit. If you have a drum room, the barrier that you build is going to be way different than if it's a vocal room. To me, that would be common sense, but I don't know if there's anything such like that anymore. I don't know if anything's common, and I don't think there's a lot of sensibility when it comes to physics. See, without a basic foundation of math and physics, I, I guess this stuff is really difficult for people to understand. I mean, I have four years of college math and four years of college physics, and sometimes I get stumped. Not too often, but sometimes I do. And then I just go into my books and do the research. So if we can lower the noise floor every five, 5 dB, which is huge, if we can lower it 5 dB, it's about a 10% increase in resolution. Now, that sounds kind of crazy, but it's really not because... You're competing with noise every day. Our world is noisy. We're competing with noise every day. People come into my studio and I always say, well, it's so quiet in here. Well, it has to be, right? Because we're all about resolution. And we know that resolution is increased when we lower the noise floor. Back to the barrier design, we know it's frequ frequency and amplitude dependent. You can't just build anything to stop everything. You can't. It won't work. The laws of physics prevent it. So the barrier we build is based on the frequency and the amplitude of our noise. Now, this is the hard part for people to understand because they don't have any experience with this. We built over 350 rooms and we've measured all of them for noise and, you know, absorption and diffusion requirements. That's how we get our product uh, research and development issues, our parameters, our design parameters from when we look at products. When you're building a barrier, to keep it simple, if your noise numbers are below 125 hertz, it's a completely different design than if your noise numbers are above 125 hertz. That's about as easy as I can make it. Now, there's variations in both of those, too. So if you're doing an outline, you have Roman number one, you have A, B, and then you'll have one, two, sub. There's a lot of things that go on here. It, barrier design is not simple. Anybody that tells you it is, is foolish. Okay, and if you believe them, you're even more foolish. So 95% of the information on the internet is given by people who've never built a room in their lives. Trust me, I read some of this nonsense. Clients send it to me all the time. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And I give them the scientific reason why it won't work. I saw a video, a client sent me a video the other day. Four, eight inch poured concrete wall. Eight inches poured concrete. And this guy was telling people if they put a half inch piece of drywall over the eight inch poured concrete wall, They'll improve lower frequency noise transmission. Nonsense. How can a less dense material 
improve noise transmission at lower frequencies when you have a high density wall with concrete. It's this kind of stuff that turns my hair more gray than it is, okay? So big difference here. All noise must be measured over seven days. We have to have a picture each day what's going on. We take noise uh, readings at the, at the quietest part of the day and the loudest part of the day. They're called mins and maxes. That's what we want. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the lowest frequency and the maximum amplitude. The loudest that low frequency is and on what day it occurs. Because if we design for lowest frequency maximum amplitude in our barrier, then we're covered with the other days that don't reach those maximum uh, levels. So that's the goal, right? Treatment. Treatment is dealing with the energy in the room, the energy that's trapped between the four walls, floor and the ceiling. That's the treatment side. Noise, treatment. Those are the two issues that we have to come up with and we have to rectify. You can have the best treated room in the world. Sounds wonderful. But you can't use it on Tuesdays because it's too noisy outside. We get this a lot. And what do we do about it? Well, this is what we do. We have a process. We have apps. We send them to you. You download them on your phone. Take the measurements per our instructions, record the data on an online data sheet, send it back to us. We send you a drawing of what barrier to build. I don't know how much easier I can make it for people. Now, this is a fee-based service. We don't work for free. Time is money, and everybody's time is valuable. I, I can't believe that adage stays true for people on the Internet. I don't know where they get the time to do all that stuff, but anyway. We must manage the energy and the treatment in the room to match the usage. Every usage is different. A drum room has larger low frequency requirements in treatment than a vocal room. Why? Voice doesn't go below 80 hertz on average for males. So drums go way lower. Kick drum, 40, 50 cycles. Tom, snare. So completely different sources of energy require completely different treatment types, and most important, completely different surface area requirements. So we got to match the usage. Well, we have pressure, low frequency energy, we use absorption. Reflection treatment, we have absorption and diffusion. We have two options here. But low frequency energy is not ever diffused. It's absorbed. D diffusing, you know, a 40 cycle wave that's 28 foot long, can you imagine what kind of diffuser it would take to do that? Probably could be done. You're probably looking at a, a diffuser that's seven feet deep. Well, who's going to have room for that? We, we sell a lot of the uh, prime number 23. Our QDA 23 are, is our most popular product. It's also our most expensive because it has diffusion and absorption in the same product. And it's a way to, to utilize minimum space and get both low frequency management and diffusion on the same surface area. So with middle and highs, we got a little bit more horsepower going for us. Low frequency manage first. You got to get the low end of the room right. How many people have a low end in their room that they're happy with? 10% maybe that we hear based on our data. So you got to get the lows. Middle and highs are easy to treat. You hang panels on the wall. You put in diffusion. It's not difficult, but the low end, that's the problem. And that's the most important frequency range to get right, below 100 cycles. You get that right, you're off to a good start. And then you can build upon the, those results. So what do we got? Standing surface area, 50%. Okay. So what we got to do in most walls, take a standard 8-foot ceiling height. We got to cover at least five feet, over 50%. 50% would be four feet. So this is a good general rule. That's why our products are five feet high, 60 inches, because most of them go in eight foot rooms. It's just a fact of life that we face here. Okay, there's nothing we can do about it. That's what it is in North America. So that's why our products are built like that. So on average, each wall surface for low frequency management is about 50% surface area coverage. And then you got to give 12, up 12 inches of 
depth on each wall, but it's worth getting a smaller room if it's more low frequency balanced. Diffusion, you gotta match the usage. You gotta understand distance and you gotta understand frequency response and you gotta understand usage. So lots of variables that come into play with diffusion. Diffusion is a wonderful technology. I've been working with it for 30 plus years, but it'll also on the flip side can make your room sound worse. So you got to have some prerequisites satisfied before you bring in diffusion. I always tell people diffusion is the chocolate syrup on the ice cream. You have to have the ice cream first. Design, noise and treatment. I really hope this helps simplify things a little bit and increases understanding. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.